In this exercise, we're going to look at some more techniques for graphing. And while, yes, they certainly are um, ways to approach drawing the sketch of a function, uh, we're going to learn some actually much uh, quicker techniques that we could perform that will give us an idea about our graph and we're going to learn that in a couple of chapters time and I while these are of course they're um, little techniques that could help I think that in the long run they will rarely be techniques that you will probably choose to use to draw a graph also uh, it's not, um, a, they're not concepts that um, certainly you will be tested on, uh, um, except I suppose you may be asked to identify intercepts of a function, but you already know how to do that. So this, in this exercise, I guess, um, Apart from intercepts, it's going to talk about the sign, the sign of the function. Now, um, the sign of, whoops, we know that if this is the x-axis, if the y values of the function are positive, then the y values will be above the x-axis. The point will actually be above the x-axis. And you can see I haven't put the y-axis in because it really doesn't matter um, what value of x I'm talking about. If we substitute any value of x into the function and it produces a positive value, that would be a positive value for y or a positive function value, the point is above the x-axis. And likewise, if we substitute our x value in and we get a negative value, then we say the function has a negative value and the point would be below the x-axis. So I guess what this exercise basically does is it establishes the x-intercepts and let's say they are at 1 and at 2. And if we test, oh no, well let's make it easier, at 1 and 3. So if we then test 2 and we find, rather than it being there, whoops, <laughs> rather than it being there on the axis, if we find that the intercept is here, the intercept is there, and at Two, we got a positive number, then we know the graph does that. If we test 4 and we get positive value, then again the graph goes from this point back up. From the point back up. And it might never come back, just depending on if there were any other intercepts. So that's what this sign is. Um, the other sign or other value we can look at, which helps sometimes with drawing a sketch, is the size of y as x tends to plus or minus infinity. So in this case, as x goes off to infinity, our x values, you could see that the y values are also going to go off to positive infinity. And of course, if it went on down here, as x goes to negative infinity, so too do the y values. And that does, that does not have to be the case. It's not that just because x goes to negative infinity, because you'll see graphs that actually look like that. So as x is going off to negative infinity, the y values are going positive, off to plus infinity. Uh, you know about the x-intercepts and they occur when y is naught and we solve an equation. They're sometimes referred to as zeros, which really makes sense to me because I'm looking for where the function, the function in x, which is y, is equal to zero. I'm looking for where the function is zero. And the x values that make the function zero, it stands to reason that they might be referred to as zeros. They're sometimes referred to as roots 
uh, yeah, that's quite common as well. And these points identify where the graph touches or cuts the x-axis. If you find there are no x-intercepts, then we say that the graph is either always positive, which is similar to what I've been saying here, or negative. And so you can have uh, functions like this one. And yes, it is there'd be no x-intercepts because clearly not cutting the x-axis and it is always negative. If there's one x-intercept, uh, it indicates the graph cut, touches or cuts the x-axis once. If there are two x-intercepts, then the graph cuts or touches in two places, etc. You know that y-intercepts occur when x is naught, and that's really easy to calculate, and you know it identifies where the graph cuts the y-axis, and you've been doing that for a long time, finding that. Uh, once you, um, the roots or the zeros are un unknown, like there above, if we look at the sign in between these roots, then we can get a bit of an idea about the shape. It is just about the shape of the graph. I'll leave the video there and talk to you about some of these examples. Um, oh no, I might do the first example in another video.